Hi everybody, it's me, Katie, and welcome back to my channel where it is all Revolutionary War all the time. And if there is one subject that I can drone on and on about for hours, it is the Battle of Bunker Hill. And today we are in Charlestown, Massachusetts at the site where the battle occurred on June 17th, 1775. And so my challenge to myself today is to see if I can give you a tour of this battlefield in 10 minutes. Can I do it given how much I love to talk about it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. One of the first things you'll notice is that we are in the middle of a very heavily developed densely populated kind of urban area. This is the Charlestown of today. But in your mind's eye, make all of these buildings and cars that are surrounding us now disappear. None of these buildings were here in 1775. Instead, replace them in your mind with long sloping fields of green pasture land. We are on a peninsula surrounded on three sides by water, the Charles River, Boston Harbor, and the Mystic River. And this whole peninsula was vastly pasture land, crisscrossed by low stone walls and split rail fences. The monument stands roughly on the location of the famous redoubt. And the redoubt was the main defensive position that the Americans took on this peninsula on June 17th. Although the battle did rage all across this entire peninsula. So the redoubt occupied this general space, kind of where the base of the monument is, and also some of this lawn area too, I think. And a redoubt is a term used to describe kind of a fortification, a very simple fortification made of dirt, like earthworks with earthen walls. Famously, the British made several attempts to storm the redoubt, but each time they ascended the hill, they were repulsed by heavy American fire. So this is the direction from which the British came. And you can kind of get a sense of the slope of the land, although there has been so much development in this area, as we know, we are looking downhill. As the British came up from this way, they attempted to storm the redoubt, but were repulsed each time by heavy American fire. However, the Americans began to run low on ammunition and their fire slackened. As it did so, it gave the British the opportunity that they needed in order to breach the walls of the redoubt and storm it. Some of the most deadly fighting occurred inside the walls of that redoubt. As the British dropped over the walls and dropped into the redoubt, they used their bayonets on the remaining stalwart American defenders. And as the Americans were out of powder and ball, they swung their muskets in defense. It was an absolute fight to the death to escape the redoubt and retreat, and many Americans lost their lives. So right now I'm kind of approaching the area of the breastwork, and that was an exterior additional fortification coming off the redoubt. So it was just kind of a very simple breastwork that men were stationed behind coming off the redoubt, not enclosed within the walls of it. And that was about here. And I'm approaching now where the rail fence kind of extended from. It didn't really extend from this point. I think it was much further back into the surrounding neighborhood streets. But just to kind of give you a sense, what was the rail fence? It was an actual fence, but it was also a, another major defensive line of the Americans. And as reinforcements arrived on the Charlestown Peninsula during the day of the 17th, they took locations along actual fence lines that extended 
all around the peninsula. Remember in the beginning of the video when I said in your mind's eye, kind of envision this as a lot of pasture land crisscrossed by split rail fences. The men kind of took advantage of those fence lines to build barricades, positions from which they could fire from. And they did so by breaking down fences where necessary and building them where necessary. So removing some rails from fences that existed and adding them to other fence lines in more strategic locations. And so the rail fence and the breastwork worked together as a kind of system to help provide additional protection to the redoubt. If not for the rail fence, then extending several yards, several hundred yards north toward the Mystic River, the redoubt would have been an island and the British would have had a much easier time flanking it and surrounding it, uh, getting up behind the men in the redoubt and cutting them off from the rest of the army. That did not happen for several reasons, more of which we'll talk about in upcoming videos, but the rail fence and the breastwork were of the utmost importance in this battle. And this is why some people say, oh, the Battle of Bunker Hill really happened on Breed's Hill. It didn't. It happened all across this entire peninsula, across all of Charlestown, not just on Breed's Hill. That was just the location of the redoubt. However, the rail fence was also a key location in this battle. But just kind of showing you more of the battlefield now, this would have been sort of behind American lines about where I am right now. And as you can see, there is all of Boston across the Charles River. And when the Americans did retreat from the redoubt, they would have kind of gone this way, retreating uh, toward Charlestown Neck, away uh, from the advancing British. Up, up we go. Right now we are looking out uh, over the Charles River into Boston. And you can no longer see the Charles River from up here on the summit of Breed's Hill, but you can see where Boston is located. There are those two skyscrapers there. The village of Charlestown was located kind of on the south, southwestern tip of this peninsula at the Charles River. And during the Battle of Bunker Hill, American snipers were posted in the village of Charlestown itself in order to fire upon and harass the British left as they faced the redoubt. And in response to this, the British lobbed shells into the village of Charlestown uh, from the north, from the Copse Hill Battery in the north end of Boston, and also fired shot into the village from the British warships that were in the Charles River. The village of Charlestown was incinerated. It was burnt to the ground during the Battle of Bunker Hill. And to this day, there is actually a burnt layer of earth that underlies Charlestown in certain areas. The cornerstone of the Bunker Hill Monument was laid in 1825 by the Marquis de Lafayette on the 50th anniversary of the battle. Just incredible to think about only 50 years separating you from the Battle of Bunker Hill, whereas now it's like 250. And at the ceremony, there were veterans of the battle, men who had fought there, who were still alive. Some of them were in attendance. And the monument itself, although the cornerstone was laid in 1825, I think it was not completed until about 1842. But it is about 200 years old, so just kind of think of that next time you climb that interior staircase all the way up to the top. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to yet another of my crazy history videos. I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already so that we can continue to grow this Revolutionary War community on YouTube and you won't miss out on future 
history adventures. Thank you all so much for sharing the journey with me and I'll see you in the next video.